Hi everybody, it's Bruce Lambert from HowCommunicationWorks.com and today I'm going to teach you about politeness, how politeness works. Politeness is more than just please and thank you, it's actually a, a, a deep concept in, in communication theory and in how communication works and reveals a tremendous amount about the relationship between people, how much politeness they use reveals a tremendous amount about the relationship between people. There are only four basic politeness strategies. I'm going to teach them to you, so let's get started. In my previous video, I was talking about Ray Dalio, the hedge fund billionaire, and his idea of radical honesty or radical transparency or radical truth-telling, and uh, I was suggesting that it wasn't such a good idea. And I said it wasn't such a good idea because it, it ignores how feelings work, and it ignores especially this idea of face, that each one of us, when we enter into a social interaction, assumes that we have a certain basic value and we don't want to be humiliated. We don't want to lose face, as they say. Uh, so we don't want to be ashamed or embarrassed or humiliated in social interaction. Uh, and yet social interaction is intrinsically somewhat risky. Uh, every time we enter into social interaction, there's some risk that we might lose face. And not only that, but we have to constantly, in everyday life, ask people to do things, tell people to do things, criticize people, uh, compliment people, ask questions. And all these things have the potential um, to cause problems between people, to threaten face, as we say. And so politeness is a set of strategies that uh, human beings have evolved for managing these everyday threats to the safety of social interaction. So in the, in the previous video, I talked about a fundamental tension in all communication. And that fundamental tension is between what some uh, people have called the task level of communication, that is the desire to get things done, and the relational or the relationship level of communication, and that is the desire to preserve harmony in our social relationships and to preserve our friendships and our intimate relationships without hurting people's feelings. So the, the desire to be efficient and get things done almost always trades off against the desire to um, maintain the, our relationships and not to hurt people's feelings. Another way to think about this tension is the tension between efficiency and regard for people's feelings, or efficiency and regard for face, where face is defined as the positive social value that people claim for themselves, or this, this desire to be liked and approved of, and also to a certain extent to be left alone. So on the one hand, we can be efficient, on the other hand, we can show regard for face uh, or feelings or the desire to be liked and approved of, the desire to be left alone, and so on. But it's hard to do both at the same time. So language and actually being socially skillful, being diplomatic, being polite, having the social graces, having savoir-faire, whatever you want to call it, uh, being uh, cool, is all a matter of being able to balance this tension between efficiency and uh, regard for face or people's feelings. Another way of thinking about the, the contrast is the difference between directness and deference. So we can either be direct or we can be deferential to people's uh, feelings and their need to be respected and so on. This is such a basic conundrum, such a basic tension in all of, of human social interaction that we shouldn't be surprised then that there's a standard solution. And the standard solution is in fact politeness. Politeness is this universal set of strategies for managing this basic tension between directness and deference, or between efficiency and the relationship. Uh, and it, it turns out it's, it's culturally universal. Sociologists have looked at languages all around the world, and in every language there are these basic strategies for being polite. Uh, and there are only four of them, and I'm going to teach them to you, and I'm going to give you some examples of, of how each of the strategies uh, works. But first, a little bit more about, uh, about face. So generally speaking, politeness is a set of strategies for managing threats to face or managing face-threatening actions. So a face-threatening action is anything that we might do in a social interaction that threatens the, the, either my own face as the speaker, like if I have to admit fault, that threatens my face, my desire to be liked and approved of. If I have to apologize, that threatens my face. Or if I, have to, if I have to ask you to do something and you don't want to be interrupted, that threatens your face. Or if I have to, to criticize you or give you advice or, or make a recommendation, 
these things all threaten your desire to be liked or to be approved of. So all of these fall into the general heading as a face threatening acts. So politeness is a set of strategies for doing face threatening acts. Now everyday life is full of face threatening acts. Um, people are sort of fragile creatures. Uh, we always we we want to both be liked and be left alone. So these are the two basic face wants or our des our persistent desire to be liked and approved of in every interaction. And similarly, but paradoxically, our persistent desire to be left alone to go about our business in every social interaction. Well, the social world and life is such that we can't always be liked and approved of and we can't always be left alone. So our face is constantly being threatened. Face threats are, are nothing could be more common than face threats every day in all sorts of ways. We have to do things that are face threatening to other people or to ourselves and other people have to do things that are face threatening to themselves or to us. So in every, every day, we're called upon to use politeness. Uh, so politeness is a set of strategies for managing these routine face-threatening acts. And they're so basic that we begin to teach them to children. As soon as children can speak, we teach them to say things like please and thank you, which are ways of showing regard. Please is if you please. Thank you. These are ways of showing regard for other people. Excuse me. Pardon me. These are the most basic forms of politeness. We teach them even to little kids because we know intuitively that politeness is a fundamental set of skills uh, uh, for the social world, that even the youngest children need to learn them. For, for most kids, one of the first words they, they learn is please and thank you. And then as they get slightly older, things like pardon me and excuse me come in soon after that. This is proof of how fundamental these, these strategies are. So uh, th this desire to be liked and approved of, uh, communication theorists sometimes call positive face, and the desire to be left alone uh, communication theory is sometimes called negative face. And anything that threatens either of those desires, either on the part of the speaker or on the part of the hearer, the one who's who's being spoken to, uh, uh, it threatens our face and we need to be polite in order to manage that face threat. So there are four basic politeness strategies. And I'll teach them to you in order of uh, increasing politeness. So the first strategy I'll teach you is the least polite. And the first strategy is called Bald on the record. Now, sometimes people say bold on the record. This, I think, is a, a malapropism. It's not, it should be baldly. So say something baldly. But, you know, baldly on the record with no adornment. With no, See, I'm bald. I got no adornment on my head. So to say something bald on the record means to say it without any apology, without any adornment, without any hedging, without any beating around the bush. So to, to do a face-threatening act bald on the record is to do it the way Ray Dalio would have you do it with brutal honesty, with radical transparency. So I'm going to use a couple of different examples to teach these um, uh, principles or these strategies. So let's imagine, I talked about this in the Ray Dalio video too. So let's imagine you're at Thanksgiving dinner or, or Christmas dinner or some sort of holiday dinner at your in-law's house and your mother-in-law uh, or grandmother, whatever it is, some relative who you love and respect um, makes uh, food that you don't like the taste of. That It's really, really bad. So to tell them that you don't like their food is face-threatening. They want to believe that they're a good cook, right? They have the desire to be liked and approved of. So to tell them that their food is bad is intrinsically face-threatening. Um, the least polite way of telling someone that the turkey at Thanksgiving tastes bad is just to say, the turkey tastes bad. That's bald on the record, right? No adornment, no apology, no hedging, no attempt to be polite, pure efficiency. This turkey sucks. Um, that is bald on the record. It's incredibly impolite but it's incredibly efficient. So the politeness strategies illustrate this trade-off between efficiency and regard for the other person's feelings or regard for managing the threat to face. Bald on the record disregards the threat to face. It basically says, I want to be efficient only and I don't care if it threatens face. So it's rude. Well, that's the first strategy, bald on the record. The other example I'm going to use as I work through this is, what if someone at, uh, at work or a friend invites you out and you don't want to go out with that person? So to reject an invitation is face threatening to the other person because they want to be liked and approved of. And to reject an invitation to go out with them suggests that you don't like them and you don't want to spend time with them. So it's intrinsically face threatening to reject an invitation. So it calls for politeness. But to, to reject an invitation bald on the record, um, you would just say something like, I decline your invitation. It's so rare to go bald on the record that the, to do it baldly on the record doesn't even sound right. It sounds strange. Say something like, um, uh, I don't want to go out with you. Even that's a little bit indirect. 
but just to, to the most bald on the record would be something just like no or I decline the invitation. But these direct forms of politeness are so unusual because we're almost never bald on the record because it's so impolite and, and most of us have more regard for face than that. So the, the second strategy is on the record with redress. So redress means payback, compensation, um, remedy. So when we do the, the face threatening act on the record, I mean, we're still doing it. We're still saying the face threatening thing, but we're paying back. Imagine that you have a bank account in your head, a face bank account or a, a self-esteem bank account. And as people say rude things to you, the balance on your bank account gets lower. But as people are polite to you, the, bank, the balance on your bank account gets higher again. So redress is like payment. We're taking something away by saying something face threatening and, and uh, rude and we're paying it back by, by making up for it with redress. So uh, let's imagine this, that we're, we're at dinner, uh, Thanksgiving dinner at, at grandma's or mother-in-law's house again, the turkey tastes bad. And grandma says, you know, or mother-in-law says, how do you like the turkey? And you say, um, the turkey's not very good, but your dress looks lovely, grandma. Or you say, the turkey sucks, but the stuffing is amazing. Or the, the gravy is incredible or the place settings look just fantastic. So you sort of give, take with one hand and give back with the other. That's uh, on the record with redress. I'm making the face threatening action on the record, but I'm paying back with the compliment. So I give with one hand and take away with the other, or take away with one hand and give the redress with the other. For the invitation example, on the record with redress would be something like, uh, how kind of you to ask, but no. Oh, that's a lovely invitation but I can't, you, you know, things like that. So you're, um, you're paying back, you're giving redress. The other examples I have, I made a long list of more than a hundred ways to refuse an invitation, which if you email me uh, or, or sign up for howcommunicationworks.com for the mailing list, I'll send you a copy of. Um, so things like, oh, I don't want to, buddy. You know, that's a way of, of, of making some redress. Anything that suggests that you're attending to the other person's desire to be liked and approved of while you're declining the invitation. Uh, so that's on the record with redress. You say, oh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? But no, thank you. So that's on the record with redress. The third strategy for politeness is off the record. And I think this is, uh, there are so many examples of, of going off the record that I can't even list them all. And there are many, many more on the record with redress strategies that I haven't even mentioned, but I want to keep the video sort of short. Uh, but uh, off the record means we don't actually say the face threatening act directly. We don't say it literally. We hint at the face threatening fact or action, and we allow people to understand what we meant by making inferences. So by making things indirectly, we are paying respect to the other person. Because what we're saying to them is, I know if I said this directly, it would be insulting to you. It would threaten face. The way... I know that you're a person who wants to be liked and approved of, and I'm going to show my acknowledgement of that by saying this thing indirectly. So grandma presents you the turkey, and they said, how do you like the turkey, Bruce? And I say, oh, this is, this is unlike any turkey I've ever eaten before. So this is indirect. I never say the turkey is bad. I never even say I don't like the turkey. But any intelligent, ordinary person would realize I probably don't like the turkey. If, if, if I, they say, how is the turkey? I say, well, I'll tell you what, the stuffing is delicious or the place settings look magnificent. The fact that I'm not saying anything about how the turkey tastes, um, it's, people can make the correct inference. But by doing it indirectly, it shows my respect for the person. It's When I say, well, this is unlike any turkey I've ever tasted before, it's more polite than saying this turkey sucks, even though the person might be able to correctly infer that I don't actually like the turkey. Uh, something like uh, if the person uh, invites you out and you don't want to go, you can refuse the invitation indirectly by saying something like, look at this stack of reports I have to get through, or I'm really beat. Or um, if they ask you out for coffee, say, boy, I've had enough coffee today. All of these will be heard as refusals of the invitation because people are not stupid. They make inferences from indirect communication all the time. But the very fact that I hint at it, rather than saying it directly, is the way I show respect for face. That's how 
indirectness works. And indirectness is this incredibly rich resource that we use where we can say one thing and mean another because we assume people can correctly make the inferences. I need to make a bunch more videos just about indirectness because the vast majority of what we communicate in everyday life is communicated indirectly. That is by inference, not by literal statement, but we say one thing, and when we say this one thing in this context, knowing what we know, the other person can, we can count on the other person to make the correct inference about what we mean. So I, I could give you more examples. So someone invites you out for coffee and you say, coffee, huh? Uh, or you say, ah, not too excited. Or you say, I've got a thousand things left to do. All of these lead them to make the correct inference that, that, they, that, they, um, that you don't want to go out for coffee with them. Um, or then there's a million other examples, which I can give you in this handout if you, if you uh, sign up or send me an email. So finally, the last strategy for uh, being polite is the most polite strategy. And that is don't do the face-threatening act at all. Sometimes... Uh, the, the act that you want to do is so face-threatening. It would hurt the other person so much. It would, it would almost certainly cause them to uh, be humiliated or to lose face. That we be out of respect and, and regard for them and liking for them. We don't do it. So examples of this are some. So grandma asks you, Bruce, how's the turkey? And you say, it's delicious. So here you just lie. Ray Dalio wouldn't like it. Um, but sometimes we just won't do the face-threatening act. It's just not worth it to hurt the other person's feeling. Or when someone uh, asks you to, to go out for drinks and you don't want to, you just go anyway. So this is don't do the face-threatening act. Or sometimes, you know, other face-threatening acts, sometimes we need to borrow money from somebody. But if you're at the Coke machine, you might say to your friend, hey, let me a quarter to get a Coke. But if you need $1,000 to pay a debt, you might hesitate to ask for $1,000 because it's too face-threatening. So we don't do the act at all. So those are the four politeness strategies. One, bald on the record, the turkey sucks. Two, on the record with your dress, the turkey doesn't taste very good, Grandma, but I really love the place settings, or I really love the stuffing, or I really love your dress, or I really love you, Grandma. Any of those are with your dress. Uh, the third strategy is off the record. This is the most unusual turkey I've ever tasted. Uh, and the fourth strategy is don't do the act at all. I love this turkey. So those are the four politeness strategies, from least polite to most polite. The more polite you are, uh, the, the, it reveals something about the nature of the relationship between the speaker and the hearer. But this video is already getting long enough, so I'll talk about that another time. For now, that's politeness strategies, universal um, strategies for managing the threats to face, for managing this tension between efficiency and regard for other people's feelings used all over the world in every known language politeness and the four politeness strategies. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy this kind of video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or go to howcommunicationworks.com and sign up to be notified when uh, new videos are posted and new content comes online. Thanks so much for listening and we'll talk to you soon.